Ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for tuning in to another episode of the Generation Wrestling Podcast. It's always is yours truly, the 29-year-old piece of gold, the franchise, aka the showstopper, better known as the G-O-W's resident tribal chief. And with me as always, I got my tag team partner, my brother, my family. He is the flyest in the room, Mr. One, Two, Three. Pin that ass down, okay, Breezy, aka EC's resident Isaac Hayes, King Two Code in the building, bro. What's good? Man, what's going on, man? As you know, as you know, man, we got a special guest in the building, man. You know, we like to talk to talk with the people. And we like to always give the people or something a little special, man. So why don't you go ahead and introduce our guest, man. And, you know, give him the franchise special, baby. Absolutely. Well, he's wrestling for promotions such as AIW, AEW, GCW, many, many more. Also, he had many notable matches against Eddie Kingston, Matt Cardona, Shane Douglas, Sabu. And the list goes on and on, baby. Ladies and gentlemen. We got Mr. Maserati West Barkley in the building, brother. How you doing? Hey, I'm good. I appreciate you having me on, man. That was an amazing intro. Wow, I'm kind of speechless. Like usually, I'm always doing the talking and shit, but wow, that blew me away. That was that was dope. That was dope. Hey, hey, man. You that's know, why he the man. I- that's why he the man. He does what yeah, he do. That's why I was glad you had him do me an intro. I thought you were gonna make me try to one up that. I was like, I gotta think of something. No, 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 man. You the guest, man. You know, you, we got to roll out the carpet for you, man. I appreciate it. Well, speaking of rolling out the carpet, man, so as always, you know, when it comes to us, we definitely got to show love to our Cleveland people, you know. Appreciate uh, we that. Shane Douglas on a while back. I'm going to excuse me, not Shane Douglas. Shane Taylor, Taylor. Taylor on a yeah, while back. Yeah. You know? And then, of course, when you look at the landscape right now, you got people such as The Miz. You got yeah. the Dolph Zigglers. Hell, I mean, you know. Uh, Johnny Gargano. Some people want to claim right. him. Some people don't. You got, the, you know, Logan Paul. You got him. Right, <laughs> so, right. You know, Straight up. <laughs> you got Dana Brooke. You got quite a few, you know, people that's come out of the city. And I guess my question I want to ask you that I asked Shane Taylor is, yeah. what do you think makes Cleveland such a hub for professional wrestling, man? That's that's. Hey, I was thinking about that the other day, and I'm so grateful. First off, that I'm from Cleveland, and it's always been like that. You know what I mean? Just growing up with that, you know. Yeah. But I was trying to think about that, dude. I think, I think No Mercy, 1999 in Cleveland made it made that happen. Mm. You know what I yeah. mean? Mm. That was a pretty, but mm. then there's also the invasion. Yeah. I don't know. Ever yeah. since those, hey, but, but then, you know, hey, I'm just, we're just shooting the shit, right? I was, we were driving yeah. with uh, Kevin Nash one day. I'm sorry, I'm dropping names, but we were driving with Big Kev. Drop. And uh, he was talking about the Richfield Coliseum too. So this goes way back to summer, uh, Survivor Series days. You know what I mean? Yeah. So <laughs> uh, yeah. I got to put it on that. Some, one of these big dogs coming into town. Ever since then, Cleveland's been the spot, the hidden gem for wrestling, for sure. And speaking of, so let's talk about, you know, AIW, right? Yeah. Let's let's talk about what that's all about, because you got so many people that's not even from Cleveland that's come up through the system. You know, you got your your Dan Houses, you got your Dante Mars, you got your Joey Janellas, you got your Matt Cardonas who've come through and stepped foot in the AIW ring. Hell, the Mad King himself, Eddie Kingston, you know, and he he wrestled for the second biggest company in the world. You know, AEW now transitioned over to the ROH brand. Let's not, you know, let's not forget you had yourself a little limelight at AEW as well. But, you know, what yeah. is it about AIW and how did you get into it, man? So I got into it. It was about, uh, I would say, five and a half years ago I started training. Uh, I went to a show, right? I heard about it from growing up being a fan of wrestling. And I always heard about AIW. And then uh, a mutual friend was working with them. He brought me in. He said, hey, come to this show. I got you tickets. I was like, all right, let me come check it out. So went and checked out the show. I mean, I already knew I wanted to be a wrestler, but I was just hooked, you know? And then I got to go backstage after, met the owners, John and Chandler, and I told them I'm signing up. And then ever since then, you know, I couldn't go back. I couldn't, like, not email them the next day, not sign it up. So to answer the first part of your question, I would put it on John and Chandler that just developed a vision for the wrestling they wanted and knew how to build people, you know what I mean, making local stars. Because, like you said at the beginning, like with Cleveland, there's so much stuff going on. I'm sure it's yeah. like that in all the big cities, but I mean, everyone from Cleveland is just, it's different than these, you know, Chicago and California, you know, LA yeah. and stuff. It's like Florida, you know, it's all, Cleveland people are different. So you got the Cavs, you got the Browns, you know, you got the tribe, you know, you got the fucking Indians or the Guardians, sorry. Um, I don't know. You know, you got all this, all this stuff going on. So to stand out in the shows, you got to keep bringing people back to the shows. So yeah. those dudes, you know, building talent from, like you mentioned, Johnny Gargano, um, Seth Rollins, you know, was the champ for a while. So it's like they've they've had the system. And, you know, I'm grateful for all the opportunities I got to do it because you mentioned these guys coming around and being in Cleveland before I even started wrestling. I was, you know, at the show setting up and 
setting up the chairs, setting up the ring. And I'd get to meet these guys that were coming into town to wrestle. So I always got to pick their brains. And, you know, sometimes we would bring in like Arn Anderson or Dean Malenko to do a seminar. So to get to learn from them before I even, you know, made my debut, I was like, I'm, I'm sitting good. So I definitely had to step above or step ahead because of that, for sure. What is that independent scene like for, for wrestlers? Because I know some people, they don't truly understand it. You know, they yeah. think, uh, you, you know, you're, you're, the, you're the talent that's not good enough for the big time. But that's not necessarily always the case. So right. what is it for the independent wrestler to really get their name over and, and to get that notoriety uh, that they can be on those big shows? But people just, they, they, need to, they just need to get the opportunity. Exactly. That's it. I mean, great question, because no one really is bringing those kind of questions up, you know, when they talk about independent wrestling. Um, you pretty much summed it up at the end of the question. But my look at it is like this. You don't just show up to WWE. Right. I mean, now it's a little right. different where they're scouting people from college. You know, right. you're six, seven, two fucking nine hundred pounds and you could run a five. You know, like these yeah. dudes are just coming in, training them. Yeah. And but, yeah. you know, they get to train with Shawn Michaels and, you know, the top dogs of all time. So they're yeah, sitting right. good and they're learning right, but like for anybody else that doesn't have that, you got to go to a training school. You got to have someone that can break you into the business. Like that's how it is. Mm -hmm. You got to start figuring out how you can get in the ring. So independents are good, and sure, there's guys that aren't good that have shows and rest on shows, but also it's like another avenue to learn. It's like you know when back in the '80s, '90s they had the territories, right? where yeah. people would go wrestle, learn and go to the next territory. And this is all different with social media and stuff. Now you can't really do that. I mean, maybe you could, but that's another thing. It's like right now you're trying to build as much buzz up notoriety, get some clout, you know, but with social media, you can go viral from doing a move or some gif or some promo goes wild or staying consistent, cutting promos. Like there's so many different avenues and wrestling has always been something that's, you know, so open that you can do different stuff from like the attitude era, bringing in more backstage segments, you know, like doing stuff backstage to even more recently yeah. with like the 24 seven belts and all that. Like there's way to do wrestling without even having to be in the ring, you know? So, and I mean, that goes back to Ric Flair cutting promos, you know, just back, you know? So I think that with social media, it's like definitely a good tool to have but that's really what it is it's like you just got to build your notoriety show that you can wrestle and that you can go and then get an opportunity to wrestle for one of these big guys and you know i'm grateful that AEW's is around now so it's not just wwe and they're giving guys shots like that's why i'm i'm so grateful for the opportunity i got over the summer last year to wrestle at the wolstein center you know i went to cleveland state that was pretty that was a pretty epic moment and oh, to be there you know it was that was that was amazing so to have companies like AEW. Uh, yeah, that have kind of sparked a new a re, a, a reemergence in wrestling. Uh, sure say not to say that Impact wasn't always there in, in, yeah. in New Japan, but obviously when AEW come in and the way they came in and the way that they were making their noise, and regardless of people wanted to give them their credit, yeah. what is your mindset now on wrestling? Now is it in a much better place? Obviously, it must be in a much better place. But do we see it flourishing for years and years to come, or is this something that people think will die over in a few years? I think it's going to be here for a while. I mean, I don't even know how the world's going, though, with social media. But I feel like yeah, W uh, wrestling in general has, like, kind of hit the mainstream, right? Like, and that's why, you know, me and Franchise were talking, and he was talking to me about wrestling. And I'm like, dude, I'm always down to talk wrestling. Because when I was growing up, right. people were dogging me for liking wrestling. You know, yeah. I didn't really give a shit. I, well, I yeah. yeah you, but you know you how could never. Was? That was a secret you could never tell anybody. Not even yeah, your right. friend. You yeah, know yeah. what I'm saying. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah, saying. So I exactly. had to keep that shit under wraps. My main, and, like, where I grew up, my dudes were all decent athletes. And I was, I was decent. But they're coming into school the next day talking about some sport game I was on. And I'm like, you see what happened on Raw, you know, like yeah. Shawn Michaels got fucking his esophagus. He's bleeding everywhere. You didn't see that shit. I didn't give a fuck about that basketball game, you know. Like my dude's looking at me, like, what's what's wrong with Wes? All right, but you um, had to create a secret society yeah. of wrestling yeah. fans just, just to, point, just to be like, able to talk. Hey, oh, it was very hard to find people, so I yeah. totally get it. Yeah, so I feel like now it's more mainstream. First off. You see right. more commercials. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I've seen, yeah. like, you know, like a random, like, Wendy's commercial, and it's got, like, a luchador in it. You know, it's like, all right, I never had that shit growing up. Like, so I feel like it's coming <laughs> more mainstream. And, I mean, it's it's kind of cool, like, when you go out or you're out in public and they got, you know, a TNT basketball game on and the AEW commercial comes on. You know, yeah. or they're watching yeah. something on yeah. Fox and the SmackDown commercial comes on. You're like, 
that's, you know, like, okay, that's pretty dope. Like, you know, regular times people are getting to see wrestling. So I think it's great for the business for sure. Awesome. And, and, and it's funny you said that too, when it, when you talk about the mainstream, because even when you look at, you know, every time you're on social media now, when you watch a basketball game, you got the champions of these certain promotions, they're out there uh, yeah. putting the companies and the brands over. And now, you know, you got all these commercials and things like that, even music videos, you know, yeah. and music and wrestling has really, truly uh, intersected. And it's been like that for a while, but even more so recently, especially yeah. when it comes to hip hop culture. You know, you got guys like Westside Gun, yeah. you got guys like, you know, Swerve Strickland bringing in Rick Ross and, yeah. you know, bringing that notoriety. So even to the casual fan who may not necessarily to be a fan of wrestling per se you see you know this six foot five jack son of a bitch you know just yeah. like who is that yeah. with a chain with a big gold championship right. like, who is that? oh yes yeah. i want to check right. that out so, no that's cool man but yeah okay speaking yeah. of wrestling and, and, yeah. and the state of wrestling uh you know we here to shoot the shit we we, we here to For be sure. a, you know um you you wrestle guys like eddie kingston You've been in the ring with a guy like a Sabu and a Paul London, right? Yeah. And all these crazy people. Yeah. But here's the thing. Yeah, but here's the yeah, thing. Yeah. You know, <laughs> what, what do you see on TV? Because perception is reality. And I'm going to give you a chance to talk your talk. How much of Eddie Kingston that we see on TV is the same guy in real life? 100,050 million percent. He might even really? be holding it back on TV. That's king. Really? That's king. That's wow. king. I, I can see that. I can see That's that. That's king. Hey. So, 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 so it, it ain't no cap in his rap. No, not at all. He's the realest like to ever that. do it. Realest to I ever like do that. it of all time. I like that. Okay. So now that brings me to my next question. How do you prepare yourself mentally to go into a match, you know, with a guy like an Eddie Kingston or Nick Gage? Because you see guys who portray this, you know, this, this character that, you know, this badass, or I can really, you know, I can rough you up. And yeah. then you Psycho hear these kind of persona. Yeah, then you hear these backstage stories. And it's like, damn, man, he was soft and real. He was getting his ass whooped in the showers. Like, he ain't that guy. <laughs> right, right. So, so, so how do you go into a match? Like, what do you have to do mentally to prepare yourself to go against somebody you know in real life it's really about that action. Yeah, he had a dude on impact too. This is when he was on impact. He ran a kid over the week before we wrestled. So I knew he he was on hinge <laughs> when I was getting in there with him. So shit. With King, I'm gonna be honest, I've never punched so I swear to God, I've never punched someone as hard as I fucking punched him. And uh -huh. he was he didn't even fucking move. You know what I mean? I was like, damn, dude, this is the hardest I ever punched someone. So I mean, when you go into those dudes, you know you're gonna get beat up. You know, you know you're gonna have to get back up that's what maserati west does i get knocked down yeah. 10 times i get up 11 and a half you know what i mean i'm keep moving because i'm getting up to that top rope at that half you know what i mean yeah. but yeah. uh no i mean you know it's gonna be you know it's gonna it can turn into anything it's unpredictable so you can't really prepare yeah. too much because like a, with the switch you're outside in the crowd you're over the guardrail you're throwing a beer at someone you know you're getting hit with a chair yeah. like with that you don't know an other match you could be like okay i know this dude's finishing move i gotta watch out for that Okay, I know this guy's move. I can watch out for that. If he goes up to the top rope, I can go over here. But with those dudes, I mean, with Kingston, I was like, I know I got to duck this back fist. I took that right <laughs> to the dome piece. I was knocked out for a second. You know, like, you can try, but with those dudes, you just got to you just gotta strap in and, and get ready for the ride, you know? No. Who have uh, – okay, I, I, I wanted to ask you yeah. earlier. Uh, you coming up Cleveland – yeah, uh, you you seeing this thing wrestling as as this man? This is something I'm enjoying. I want to do it. Yeah. Who are some of the people that helped you uh, when you were that young young kid coming up? That you when you first got into you know when you first got to AI, AIW and others. Who was those some of those people that helped you uh, come along to be the person that you are now? Yeah. Um. And I'm still learning, man. You know what I mean? I'm still. Oh, obviously. I'm still learning, but uh, Johnny you know, was there, Dark Gargano, was there when I started training. So having him around just to kind of make sure everything was running good, you know, that was that was an awesome, you know, just to have that. Um, I've done a lot of those seminars. That was key, is doing these seminars, you know, right. whether it's going out to someone, but most of the time AIW bringing in guys. So yeah. seminars I got to do, you know, was Arn Anderson to Dean Malenko to Glacier. We had Glacier. He dropped some wisdom, you know uh billy kidman coming in and just giving you some other gems you know so 
that was that was awesome. But then also like Josh Prohibition, you know, he's he's a legend in Cleveland, and, and Matt yeah. Cross, M Dog yeah. Twenty, just the, having those guys around and yeah, always being able to pick their brain, yeah. and you know, just them being so cool to answer whatever. Because like you, like this is something I heard when I first started doing those seminars was that like you'll hear something and it might not hit you, and then like years down the road you'll get it. And like, that's a lot of the stuff with Arn. Like I remember like after I really started wrestling like a year in, I was just like, okay, now I kind of get that. And even still like I'll pop something and I'm like, dude, that's what they said that time. So also I got to say like Colin Delaney, you know, Colin Delaney, yeah, okay. yep. he's been I've awesome help to me. I'm really grateful for him. Um, and Cheech, his partner, they've always been helpful. And then uh, even though sometimes we get, we get after it in the ring, uh, Hornswoggle. That's just, he's given me a lot of advice and a lot of help. So I'm really grateful for him too, even though he hates me right now, but then he got me and my partner, Josh Bishop and DX. So I really don't know what's going on. Uh, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's cool. So no. Okay. So speaking of, you know, Cleveland, so you tell, you know, you yeah. got your, you got your chance with, you know, uh, to wrestle in a, uh, for AW here in Cleveland. Epic. How important is it for you, especially as an independent guy and as, as a person who's, you know, wrestling in this social media, this digital age, how important is it for you to get yourself over and to make your name uh, before necessarily just trying to just go to a big company, you know, because now you see yeah. people who wrestle for these big companies for years and now they're taking the independent route and they're loving it. You know, uh, sure. most recently you got, you know, Sasha Banks now known as Mercedes Monet. She's on the independence doing her thing. And yeah. you have people of, you know, other, you know, higher statues doing the same thing. Chris Jericho, nobody ever would have thought Chris Jericho would have left WWE, you know? Yeah. And then here he goes. I got, he that, starts book. Off, I got that book right here. Right there. See, mm -hmm. Alliance too. And he goes off and he starts, you know, and he becomes, you know, the first ever inaugural champion of the second biggest company in the world right now. So, Sick. For you, how important is it Sick. to you to brand yourself and to get yourself out there and to make yourself a high commodity as opposed to just wanting to be on the show, just to say, hey, I wrestle for this company? Exactly. That's it. Because, um, you know, it's like a double. It goes both ways. Right. So like you said, you could be in like WWE or big name company. You get that clout from there and then you can go to the independence and do whatever you want. Right. That's the dream. Right. Back but right now, move. right now, I am not I don't not at that level. So I need to get my following now. Yeah. where a WWE or an AEW or Impact, you know, would give me an opportunity because they're like, hey, look, this dude's doing it. They're not going to just give yeah. someone an opportunity that just is like, you know, if, even if I've been wrestling for, you know, four or five years, right, and they got no falling, they'd be like, what the fuck is this guy doing now? You know, like, right, right. no one cares about him. Okay, he just does this. But, like, when you get that falling, they go, okay, let me look. Or, you know, more people that follow you, they see something you do in a match, then they send that over to their buddy. And their buddy sends it to their buddy. And again, you never know who's in the crowd and who can see what's on Twitter and Instagram. You know yeah, what I mean? Right. You could always have a scout looking. So they see you could do something. All right, I kind of like this guy. He's got a following. Okay, he's been doing this for a while. Okay, he kind of knows what he's doing. Let's give him a shot. So to get eyes on you from the big dogs, you got to have right. a following. And then after you leave there, sure, you have a following, but it's what you do with it. You know what I mean? Like right. Matt Cardona is an amazing example. He's got like 2 million followers on Instagram, Twitter. And he left WWE like after the pandemic and stuff. And he's just been doing stuff his way. He does it his way. What he wants to do. He's making figures. You know, he's taking the bookings he wants and he's having fun. You could definitely tell. You know what I mean? So he wouldn't be able to do that without, you know, building that following. So right. my, you know, you pretty much summed it up with a lot of things. Because it's like the mainstream exposure. I would love that. Right. When I was a kid, I was like, dude, what the fuck? The Rock's going to become an actor? Like. I, I hate all these wrestlers that are just doing wrestling to get to the acting, right? I'm not saying I'm trying to do that, but I'm saying in yeah. the social media age, you got to have other avenues, right? Like, you can only watch so much wrestling. If I'm doing some other shit on Instagram or something, they'd be like, all right, let's check it out. But if it's just Maserati West, Cleveland dude, okay. But if it's like WWE superstar, Maserati West, they're like, okay, let's yeah. check out what this dude's doing. And then you yeah. get those connections like Rick Ross and, you know, Gunn and, who kid and fabulous there at the shows that you never know what can happen. That can spin off into something else. So Absolutely. I think, you know, it's just, it's building your brand in, in general, you know, like, and that's so crazy. Like to hear that kind of stuff. Like I was in California doing some, I was trying to make some plays and you know, they're like, you got to work on your brand. I'm like, okay, I get it. You know, understood. All right. Well, well, outside of uh, rest, if it, right now I understand you're in the midst of wrestling, but is there, is yeah. there something else to West? What is the, th what is outside of, of wrestling that West is doing that West, you know, wants to definitely get it, you know, his name out on. And yeah. want to put that market into. 
I love entertaining people. That's what my purpose in life is, right? I, I, I know wrestling is the avenue, but I just love right. entertaining people. So if I were to make, like, I used to do these food reviews. I still do them. The food reviews on Instagram, right, where I'm just going to a local spot in Cleveland. If you guys got any spots, oh, let me know. Or when I'm on the road at a show, I'll pull up in a place. We just do it live. I get a guy to film me. I go, we're taking a bite of this. We're seeing that. You know, the other everyone's doing it now. So it's like, whatever. But it's still fun when I do it. But Right. It, it would just like I would go out in public, right? And people would be like, dude, I love those food reviews. That place is fire. And I'm like, when people start saying that to me, I was like, okay, this thing's got some legs. And, you know, it's kind of cool people are saying it, but it's more so that they actually enjoy it. You know, sure, they want to see me cutting a promo about how I'm going to kick someone's ass on Saturday or some shit, you know? But right. also, they would be like, whoa, that food place down the street, I've never been there, but let's go check it out. Oh, you said it. Oh, this is funny. Something, you know, like a fucking pepperoni dropped or some shit and made a mess and, like people are loving it you know just shit like that so i mean i always had a passion for music though right so yeah, right. but i dude honestly like you said i'm focused on wrestling and like when i first started i was always trying to do i had too much stuff cooking i was doing art i was doing clothes i was doing food i was doing music and i was wrestling but i was going hard in wrestling and I, I had to take a step back and be like dude i just gotta go full throttle on the wrestling because this is honestly all i care about right now so so what does Maserati West have coming up right now? What what is what is in your plans of what you want to do right now? Wrestling wise or just in, in life? D- 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 wrestling life, whatever, man. Wrestling, we gotta get a couple more bookings rolling. We got some big plays lined right. up, but I'm trying to get I'm just I was doing it before I got on here. It was just ironing out my schedule and I got some open weekends that I gotta fill up and get some more opportunities. Last year was amazing, right? Like I got right. to wrestle for the NWA, I gotta wrestle for AEW. You know, there's some big matches in AIW, I gotta go on the road to GCW, do some other shit. Like Whew, I gotta top it this year, right? I gotta top right. it this year because there's a lot of other guys topping it. So I gotta work harder and do that. Uh, I got some, I got some food moves cooking with the food reviews. There's, there's going to be some new stuff coming around there. Uh, merch is coming in hot. I got some, I got some stuff lined up with some new merch. The Maserati West takeover is happening. Um, let's see what else I got that coming up. I haven't been in the art game too crazy, but I got a play in my back pocket that we might see here soon. And then, uh, I'll be back out in California, you know, maybe doing some movie stuff, but we can't talk too much about that. No, no, TV no, no, movie no, no, stuff. No. That's all I can say, but Callie, I'll be back soon. So, well, I just know, you know, now with 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 uh, Tony Khan kind of, mm-hmm. you know, keeping a hold of Ring of Honor, uh, definitely wouldn't mind. I, I think there's an opportunity, definitely, to see Maserati Rest go over there and All show right. them folks what you got. So, you know, Appreciate you know that. make sure you make sure you build that brand up, man. Because, like I said, I, I definitely, uh, I'm definitely, I'm happy for the wrestling business for where it's at because. You know, I'm 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 the older of the group of the two, and yeah. I remember watching the early WCW Sting days, the the, the Beach Blonde Sting, and yeah. all of those guys. And I remember those territories, and I re- and I always yeah. liked the territories. I always liked having the different things to watch, and I like having For that sure. now. So I definitely want to see guys like you. Who know, and, and I'm trying to get more into the independent scene. I'm not gonna lie, social media is a big help to yeah. the independent scene because yeah. I, I get to see a lot of these guys that. I only hear about them, but I can never sure. find anything to be able to see them. So yeah. to be able to see guys like you now, to have a match with Eddie Kingston in the backyard with a whole bunch of people, and they just going <laughs> bananas and crazy, like Ooh. that's awesome. Like I, I, I've always yeah. thought, I've always kind of felt <laughs> backyard that. wrestling has yeah. become the new territory for wrestling, even though it's backyard wrestling. But yeah, it's what it works for you guys. It's yeah, so I, for sure. so but you know, I definitely want to see you. Uh, no doubt, man. But I definitely want to see you. Uh, I think that's a great opportunity for you to go over to yeah. Ring of Honor because uh, they they're looking for guys like you. I'd love to get down. I there. definitely want to see you over there. I'd love to get down there. Speaking Appreciate of, that. that. A, yeah, speaking yeah, of, that was me. a hell of a visual. You know, you Eddie Kingston. I got the U-Haul truck in the back. I'm like, I like that. I like it. I like it. Right. Well, you went crazy. You got the year after too. The year, the next year, me and my tag partner Josh Bishop, uh, we wrestled Nick Gage and Filthy Tom Lawler in a two-on-two. Anything goes. Crazy hardcore match. Light tubes. All the shit. Yeah, that was pretty wild. That venue is is legendary. We lost it for a couple years. They had new management. We went back right. this year. I had a Texas Bowl Road match against this dude. The Duke went crazy again. This year, I can't wait. That's my favorite show of the summer. You guys got to get to that. You guys got to get to a show in general, man. We got to get you there. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, no, no. Well, we, got, we definitely got to. We definitely gonna we, we definitely gonna do that, especially man. We're gonna be in your corner, but I, I gotta ask you something. You just, we talked about Eddie Kingston. Yeah. We talked about Nick Gage. That's a crazy son of a bitch, man. <laughs> Nick Gage, king of the death match. And then of course you said 50 Tom Lawler, man. He ain't no joke. Yeah. He's serious. He about his business too. Again, you know, you a young guy, especially in comparison to these two. You know, are you intimidated at all, man, when you go into situations with these guys, especially with a guy with, a, with, a, with the reputation of a Nick Gage? Because yeah. you know 
somebody getting cut up. And you oh, know, yeah, he, he, he cut right me up. up. I got a little scar in there. I don't think you can even see uh, it, but Gage. He said, he man, me. lose he, a he, finger or something. Shit, I was close. We uh, <laughs> I, it was, we had we had a couple matches, me and Gage, that were pretty pretty wild. I mean, he's, you know, as advertised, it's shit, it's a fight. So, Did you know, you're probably going to get a piece of cutter. No pizza cutter. No, he didn't have me with pizza. Uh, no, 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 he didn't okay. have he the, had maybe pizza. Maybe he did. I don't think he had it. I don't think he had it. He hit me with a, like a frying thing, a, a, a thing of a frying for uh, French fries. It was a fans bring the weapons. Oh. They had wild shit that cut me. Off. I was like, he was grading me and shit. Yeah, oh. he might have. We went into some Legos. He threw me in. A, he gave me a spine buster and some oh. Legos. Yeah, that's that's shit. Thumbtacks. Oh. Yeah, that's just gross. Question for you. Question yeah. for you. Yeah. I've always wanted to know. I don't have the balls to try it, so I'm living vicariously through you. <laughs> Thumbtacks. Do they feel as bad as they look? It's a it's a two pointer because you get it hurts when you get them, and then you got to take them out. Uh, it hurts when they come out too. It's a two pointer. Uh, That's why you uh, yeah. sometimes you just hit them and they're uh, out of you. Well, one time I got hit and I was I had a couple in the back of my head. I'm like, those are gonna be rough on the way out. Uh, yeah, because they hey, those, uh, those are rough. Those are rough. Do they ever try to shave the shave the points down so they're not as long when they? Honestly, I mean, most of the times I've used them. It's a fan bring the weapons, and these fans are just you know they got them in the box. <laughs> they're throwing it in the ring, and you just dumping them out. You're just like, oh, uh, like I so have basically, a bag. You know, in a bag under the ring, there's thumbtacks, right? I don't know. Mick Foley kind of made that a thing. You know, you knew there's oh, thumbtacks. So I had a bag. I just rolled them, and it was like this long. I was like, they kept going. Awesome. I'm like, oh. Oh, there's more, you know? Oh, there's so the whole so ring is filled with damn thumbtacks. I go, I can't fall now. So no, basically, they went fun. to Home Depot. They, they went to Home Depot and got the industrial thumbtacks and came back. Went to it's the like, back, bought them out. They're out of thumbtacks in that place. <laughs> Home ah, Depot damn. on 117th, out of thumbtacks. Oh, hell no. Damn. We, uh, wow. we, got, a, we got a question there from uh, uh, one of our what guys. What about broken Doug? glass? Broken glass, glass is the worst because – it's the worst for everybody, right? Because if, if first off it hurts, that thing slices you up, you get cut up. Every time you fall after that in the ring, you're getting cut up. And sometimes, like with uh, these bigger companies that use a lot of glass and tubes, they'll try to sweep it out. You know, they do the sweeper, but sometimes there's still some shards, and you could be a match or two later and fall on it on the mat, and there's still glass and get you sliced. So it, no, yeah. glass is glass is brutal. Glass is the worst. Mm. Barboyer sucks too, but glasses. Ah man, I, I well man. Um, actually, man, you asked, you kind of asked the question because I I was gonna get into the hardcore stuff, man. And just like what are some of the craziest hard, but you you already answered it. Uh, just get into a match with Nick Gage and and Eddie Ooh, he threw I me think. through a door, a table. Sorry, that was upside down. Still Wait, to this what? day, I've never seen anybody do that. So that was cool, but shit, was I limping the next? Fucking week, yeah. I was, was about I to say, did you get up? Stuff? Period. Yeah, I was banged up. So cool. I was, I was, I, you know, the only dude to do a upside down do a table. But was it cool? I was banged up, man. <laughs> Me and Gage man. went at it. Me and Gage went at it for a couple. We we were getting at it for like a summer. So. I, 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 I yeah, you go ahead, brother. I, yeah, I, I got nothing, man. I, I, I man, I, I, my mind was blown on that one because I'm still tripping about the thumbtacks. I just realized, like, damn, I was hoping they. I, w- I always thought maybe they would like shave them down or something. Like they weren't I mean, as long. On the indies too, we don't got any of that production like that. You know, there's no production oh, yeah, like that. Man. There's sometimes I go to a show. There's four fans in the crowd, right? And I'm not trying to, you know, hey. You know what you were saying earlier about the indies. I'm wrestling as much as I can, right? I got to be in there. I got to be sharp, right? Other guys, they got training centers and they got shows five days a week. You know, I'm trying to get as many bookings as possible. Sometimes, you know, this was earlier, but I go to a show. There's four people in the crowd. You know that ring's not going to be good. That thing's barely – there's a Twitter thing going around about a a wood block holding a ring up. I'm like, what the – you know, sometimes there's some sketchy stuff. So you just got to be ready to adapt. But it makes us better. You know what I mean? That's in my opinion. You could bring a guy, like I was saying earlier – superstar athlete you could bring him to the pc train him and then have him wrestle but he doesn't have the experiences that the dudes on the indies got right whether it's one year or 10 years you know what i mean right no no i i definitely agree with that because definitely a lot of uh indie guys that you can see can make the transition to the big leagues and but just doesn't always get that necessary shine because right. they always kind of got that independent like uh holding them back like yeah you're 100%. good but you're not Right, but you know you could you're not as good. But it's like no, a lot of times you're better. You're more technical. You're better in the right. ring. Your promos are better. Everything about yeah. you is a step better 
You just need a fine tuning. And when you get that fine tuning, you're a Hall of Fame talent. For sure. For sure. All right, Wes, we ain't going to hold you too much longer. Man, I got a few last things I want to talk to you about. Yeah, do your thing. Uh, Because I I know we got got, got a date coming up we got to talk about that's coming up real soon. Yeah, hold on. Uh, Uh Uh-oh. No, we're good, right? My bad. There There you go. There you go. There you go. You back. You back. back. All right, my bad. No, no. So, so I know we, I know we got a, uh, we got a date coming up. We're gonna talk about that in a second. But there has been a, a situation that's been going around online, and I figure, hey, why not ask another wrestler? Let's There's hear a it. certain guy who calls himself the devil. There's a certain guy who, uh, you know, threw a certain drink in a certain kid's face, and everybody's flipping shit. And I just want to know, from a wrestler's point of view, are the fans are are the fans reading too much into it, man? I mean, have I thrown a drink from a fan before? Facts. Have I done it this year? Facts. Have I done it multiple, more than two? Yeah. But most of the time when I'm throwing the drink from a fan, I'm throwing it at the dude I'm wrestling. So mm. I don't know why he went at a little kid. Hey, maybe he said something, and, you know, maybe he's got some thin skin and it, and it hit him a little bit. I don't <laughs> know. But if I'm trying to, you know, win an hour-long Ironman match, minute one, two, if I can blind the dude, we're sitting yeah. good. We're sitting good. <laughs> So, I mean, Maserati West, I'm always two steps ahead. He'll tell you that. MJF will tell you that. He knows. <laughs> he knows. Hey, man. You, hey, you, hey, look, I had to let you talk. Yo, talk. All right, Maz. I know we got an event coming up. We got a date coming up. Talk to the yeah. people, man. Give it to them. March 24th, AIW. Back in Cleveland. It's been a minute, but we're back. Masonic Temple. The Temple Live. May uh, March 24th. Sorry. Oh, okay. 7.30 p.m. Limited tickets left. This show is rocking and rolling. We got uh, Steph Delander. She was in uh, NXT, right? She was yep, in yep. Uh, WWE, right? Uh-huh. Uh, Timothy Thatcher, right? Oh, he was down there. So he's Texas coming Kevin in. That's, huge. that's my guy. That's that's guy. Guy. Okay. All right. Yeah, he'll yeah, be there March dude. 24th. Uh, let me see. Who do we got next? Matt Cardona. He's oh, coming man. back. Ooh. He thinks he's the champ okay. of the company. We'll see. He's going against <laughs> my dude, Josh Bishop, for the big belt. We'll see what happens. And uh, you got Joey Janela too. You got Joey Janela too. Okay. And okay. last but certainly not least, you got X Pac. Oh yeah. But there's, okay. I see, I did but there's something deeper. There's something deeper, right? Filthy Tom Lawler, right? For some reason, we you know we talked about him a little bit on the podcast. We thought we were cool. Then we we just mm. keep button pass. And last show, him and Josh, my dude, had a crazy match. I went out there to check on JB. I was like, "You good?" And Filthy Tom grabbed me, threw me into the guardrail. A little unnecessary, and he's been talking a lot of shit behind my back. So I showed up at the end of the show. I called him out. So me and Filthy Tom, March twenty fourth. I'm going against UFC star, former absolute champ, Filthy Tom. People would be like, "Hey, I know you did it in the octagon. Let's see you do it in the ring." No, I've been. At, he's dropped me on my head once. He's dropped me on my head six times. Right, busted me over. Damn. Finally, back in Cleveland. With the G-O-W, best podcast out there. Cheer it. One, two, three, Maserati West. Filthy Tom will be looking up at those lights, counting them at the Masonic, and you can bet on why, that. Why did he come back to Cleveland asking himself, why did I come here and agree to this? Yeah, we'll have to put him his ass on the interview after. Ask him why he <laughs> fucking decided to mess with Maserati West. <laughs> hey, well, look, you know, we got like a beautiful it. lake like called it. Lake I Erie. like it. We ain't too far. We got Edgewater right yeah. down the street. And with oh, that yeah. being said, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, thank you once again for tuning in to another episode of the GOW, the Generational Wrestling Podcast. As always, is yours truly, the 29 year old piece of gold. He's your king, too cold. And he ain't the Billy, he ain't the Benz. That's Maserati West. Peace. Hell yeah.